In this lesson, we are going to discuss image formation in concave mirrors through ray diagramming. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to identify some practical uses of concave mirrors and predict the qualitative characteristics of images formed by concave mirrors through ray diagramming. We have previously discussed the two classes of spherical mirrors. One type of spherical mirror has an internal reflective surface when it was taken from a sphere. This gives a reflective surface which curves inward. We can also say that its reflective surface is going away the incident light. Concave mirrors are used to focus light which makes it a converging mirror. It allows the incident light to meet on the focus in front of it, allowing it to produce real images. Concave mirrors also produce virtual images. The type of image produced by concave mirrors is dependent on the object's location in front of the mirror. Aside from the type of image, the sizes of the image formed by concave mirrors also vary. A shaving mirror gives an enlarged image. When using this mirror, the face must be within the focal length of the mirror to get an upright and enlarged image. This is very useful to look closer to the small growths of facial hair which cannot be easily seen in a typical mirror. If you move far enough away from the shaving mirror, your reflection will be inverted and become smaller. Near the base of a microscope, you may find a concave mirror mounted so it can be turned in any direction. Concave mirrors are used in microscopes to collect light from a lamp, shining it up onto a slide containing a specimen so it can be viewed through a magnification lens. In motorcycles, the bulb of the headlight is placed at the focus of a concave mirror to allow the light to spread out to infinity or longer distances and are approximately parallel. In this mirror, no image is formed. Only light is spreading out because of the location of the object. But how do concave mirrors form images? In this lesson, we are going to use the method of ray diagramming to see the image formation in concave mirrors and describe the qualitative characteristics of these images. Let us first look at the image formation of an object placed beyond the center of curvature of the concave mirror. We write this as d sub o is greater than c. For our spherical mirror diagram, we should always put the focal point exactly in between c and v. This means that the focal length should be equal to the length of the focal point to the center of curvature. For this ray diagramming, we are going to identify the image's location, orientation, type, and size. We call this our LUTs. We are going to identify these qualitative characteristics after doing the ray diagram. The first step is to place the object on the diagram. Since it is beyond C, we expect that its distance is greater than the center or the radius of the sphere. Thus, we place it anywhere beyond C. Take note that we put it on the left of C because our vertex is zero and the length from C to V is the radius. This means that we measure from the vertex going to the left. In ray diagrams, we are going to use at least two rays. For this discussion, I'm going to show you three rays. For visual purposes, the incident rays are drawn in solid lines while the reflected rays are drawn in broken lines. The first one is a ray incident from the object to the mirror parallel to the principal axis. This is what we call the principal ray. After hitting the mirror, it will reflect away from the mirror passing through the focus. The second ray is incident to the mirror passing from the object to the focus. This is the focal ray. After hitting the mirror, it will reflect away parallel to the principal axis. This ray is the exact opposite of the principal ray. These are our two required rays. The third but optional ray is incident to the mirror passing from the object to the center of curvature. This is the central ray. After hitting the mirror, it will reflect away going back to the center of curvature. As we can see in this diagram, the three rays have an intersection. This intersection is the point in which the tip of the object is formed in the image. The base of the object always touches the principal axis, so does the image form. And since you only need two rays, we can remove the central ray from the picture. We may still use the central ray as our checker of our ray diagram. And here we have our ray diagram for an object placed beyond the center of curvature. Let us now identify the qualitative characteristics of this image. For this image location, 
we're going to describe it relative to the points on the diagram. Since the image is in between C and F, this means that the image distance is greater than F, but it is also less than C. This gives us this location description. For the orientation, we can see that the image is vertically reversed. Also, it was formed below the principal axis. This means that it is inverted. Automatically, its image type is real. Another explanation for this is that the rays intersected in front of the mirror to create the image. Lastly, for the size, we can see that the image is smaller than the object. This means that the image is reduced. In summary, for an object placed beyond the center of curvature of a concave mirror, the image will be in between C and F, inverted, real, and reduced. But what if the object is placed exactly on the center of curvature? For this image formation, d sub o is equal to c. Let us again draw the following rays. First, we have the principal ray. This will be drawn parallel to the principal axis. As it hits the mirror, it will reflect away passing through the focus. Second, we have the focal ray which passes along the focus until it reaches the mirror. Then, it will reflect away parallel to the principal axis. These are the two required rays. We will not draw the central ray because the light rays cannot pass through C since the object is at C. Thus, in this intersection of the principal and focal rays is where the image is formed. Now, let us qualitatively describe the image. For the location, the image is exactly on the same location with that of the object. That's why our d sub i or image distance is also equal to C. For the orientation, since the intersection is placed below the principal axis, the image is inverted. For the type, since the image is inverted and since the light rays intersected in front of the mirror, the image is real. Lastly, there is no apparent change in the size of the object as seen in the image. Thus, the image has the same size with that of the object. This means that objects placed exactly on C of a concave mirror form images which are also at C, inverted, real, and have the same size. Now, let's look at the image formation if the object is placed between C and F. For this image formation, D sub O is less than the center of curvature but greater than the focal point. Let us again draw the following rays. First, we have the principal ray. Again, this will be drawn parallel to the principal axis. As it hits the mirror, it will reflect away passing through the focus. Second, we have the focal ray which passes along the focus until it reaches the mirror. Then, it will reflect away parallel to the principal axis. These are our two required rays. But let us check the third ray which is the central ray. Since the object is placed before the center of curvature, we cannot directly let the light pass through the center of curvature until it reaches the mirror. What we should do is to let the light be incident to the mirror but relative to the center of curvature. So, we are going to draw a broken segment from the tip of the object up to the center of curvature. This is our reference on how we should draw the incident ray. For the reflected central ray, it will just then pass through the tip of the object and to the center of curvature. As we can see here, we have the intersection of these three reflected rays. This is where the image will be formed. To see the diagram by using only two rays, we can omit the central ray. Now, let us qualitatively describe the image. For the location, the image is neither the center than the focus, so we only use the center as the point of reference. Since it is beyond C, the image distance is written as d sub i is greater than c. For the orientation, since the intersection is placed below the principal axis, the image is inverted. For the type, since the image is inverted and since the light rays intersected in front of the mirror, the image is real. Lastly, there is an apparent enlargement in the size of the object as seen in the image. Thus, the image is enlarged. This means that objects placed between C and F form images which are beyond C, inverted, real, and enlarged. Now, let's look at the image formation if the object is placed exactly on the focal point. For this image formation, 
d sub o is equal to f. Let us again draw the following rays. First, the principal ray. This will be drawn parallel to the principal axis. As it hits the mirror, it will reflect a wave passing through the focus. Supposedly, we will draw the focal ray. However, we cannot draw the focal ray passing through the focus since the object is standing on top of the focus. Since we do not have the focal ray and since we need an intersection, we need to have the central ray. Since the object is placed before the center of curvature, we cannot directly let the light pass through the center of curvature until it reaches the mirror. What we should do is to let the light be incident to the mirror but relative to the center of curvature. So we need to draw again a broken segment from the tip of the object up to the center of curvature. This is our reference on how we should draw the incident ray. For the reflected central ray, it would just then pass through the tip of the object and the center of curvature. As we can see here, we do not have any intersection on the reflected rays because they are parallel to each other. Even if we extend the reflected rays into the mirror, there would be no intersection. This means that there is no image formed. Objects placed exactly on the focal point will not form any image. Just like in motorcycle headlights, the light rays will just be parallel to each other. For the last location, let's look at the image formation if the object is placed before the focus. For this image formation, the object distance is described as d sub o is less than f. We may also use vertex as an additional reference point. Since the object is in between f and v, we can also write it as d sub o is greater than v but less than f. Let us now draw the rays. First, we have the principal ray. Again, this will be drawn parallel to the principal axis. As it hits the mirror, it will reflect away passing through the focus. Second, for the focal ray, the object is placed before the focus. Because of that, we cannot make the light incident to the mirror while passing through the focus. What we can do again is to have an imaginary light ray connecting the tip of the object and the focal point so we draw this broken line. This will be our guide for the incident focal ray. The reflected focal ray will be parallel to the principal axis. Third, for the central ray, we will connect the center to the tip of the object first since the object is placed before the center. From this, we draw the incident central ray. After this, we draw the reflected central ray. As we can see in this diagram, we cannot form any point of intersection because all reflected rays are diverging. However, we can still consider the inside of the mirror. With this, we are going to extend all reflected rays. We just draw imaginary rays extending the reflected rays inside the mirror. Take note that it is the reflected ray that should be extended and not the incident ray. Now, we can see an intersection of the three rays. This is where the image is formed. Even if we remove the central ray, the intersection is clear and accurate. Now, let us qualitatively describe the image. For the location, the image is placed beyond the mirror. We can also say that it is at the back of or inside the mirror or at the non-reflective surface. We may also write that d sub i is less than v since v is our reference point or zero. Any image formed inside the mirror will have a negative image distance. For the orientation, since the intersection is placed above the principal axis, the image is upright. For the type, since the image is upright and since the light rays did not intersect in front of the mirror, the image is virtual. Lastly, there is an apparent enlargement in the size of the object as seen in the image. Thus, the image is enlarged. This means that objects placed between F and V form images which are inside the mirror, upright, virtual, and enlarged. After discussing the five possible object locations in front of a concave mirror, let us summarize the effect of the object distance to the image's orientation, type, and size. These are the five locations which we have discussed. Let us first look at how the object distance affects the orientation. And since orientation affects type, type is also affected. The mirror's focus is responsible for the changes in these two characteristics. Objects placed beyond or greater than f will result to inverted 
and real images. Objects placed exactly on F will not form any images. And lastly, objects placed before F but after V will form upright and virtual images. For the next part, let us look at how the center of curvature affects the size of the image. Objects placed beyond C will form reduced or smaller images. Objects placed exactly on C have the same image size. Objects placed before C but after V are enlarged, except for objects placed at F which do not form any images. Now, let us try to do ray diagramming for problems involving actual quantities. Predict the qualitative characteristics of an image formed by an object placed at 15 cm of a concave mirror with a radius of 20 cm. To know where to put the object when given an actual value, we need to identify the measurements of the other points also. We're only given a radius of 20 cm, which is the position of the center of curvature away from the vertex. From this, we would also know the value for the focus. We know that the focus is exactly half of the center of curvature. This gives us 10 cm. Comparing the object distance to C and F, C of 20 cm is greater than 15 cm. F of 10 cm is less than 15 cm. Thus, the object is placed in between the two points. We describe this as D sub O is less than C but greater than F. Let us now draw the following rays. We are not going to draw the central ray anymore. First, we have the principal ray. Again, this will be drawn parallel to the principal axis. As it hits the mirror, it will reflect away passing through the focus. Second, we have the focal ray which passes along the focus until it reaches the mirror. Then, it will reflect away parallel to the principal axis. The point of intersection of the two reflected rays gives us this image. Now, let us qualitatively describe the image. For the location, the image is beyond C. Thus, the image distance is written as D sub i is greater than C. To be specific, it is beyond 20 cm. For the orientation, since the intersection is placed below the principal axis, the image is inverted. For the type, since the image is inverted and since the light rays intersected in front of the mirror, the image is real. Lastly, there is an apparent enlargement in the size of the object as seen in the image. Thus, the image is enlarged. Let's look at another example. Predict the qualitative characteristics of an image formed by an object placed at 16 cm of a concave mirror with a focus at 8 cm. Again, we need to identify the measurements of the other points to identify the location of the object on the diagram. We're only given a focus of 8 cm. From this, we would also know the value for the center of curvature. We know that the focus is exactly half of the center of curvature. This gives us a center of curvature placed on 16 cm. Comparing the object distance to C and F, the object should be placed exactly on C. We describe this as D sub O is equal to C. Let us now draw the following rays. First, we have the principal ray. This will be drawn parallel to the principal axis. As it hits the mirror, it will reflect away passing through the focus. Second, we have the focal ray which passes along the focus until it reaches the mirror. Then, it will reflect away parallel to the principal axis. Now, we can see an intersection here and this is where the image will be formed. To qualitatively describe the image for the location, the image is exactly on the same location with that of the object. Specifically, the image distance is also 16 cm away from the vertex. For the orientation, since the intersection is placed below the principal axis, the image is inverted. For the type, since the image is inverted, and since the light rays intersected in front of the mirror, the image is real. Lastly, there is no apparent change in the size of the object as seen in the image. Thus, the image is the same size with that of the object. This satisfies the qualitative characteristics of images formed by objects placed at sea of concave mirrors. Now, to conclude this lesson, let us review the following key points. 
Concave mirrors are spherical mirrors with an internal reflective surface and are used primarily to focus light. The three rays used in diagramming image formation in concave mirrors are the principal ray, focal ray, and central ray. The object's location relative to the focus of a concave mirror gives us a glimpse of the type and orientation of the image. And lastly, the object's location relative to the center of curvature of a concave mirror gives us a glimpse of the size of the image. And that ends our discussion on image formation in concave mirrors through ray diagramming.